We have new uh, parents in law here that uh, got to be parents in law on Friday. And uh, they look it, they look great. John and, uh, and Beatrice, the Lord bless you. I don't know whether Pascaline, you're here. Uh, also, uh, joining that family, that will be great. A winning team, we bless the name of the Lord. Because Christmas has started, I want to start a series of Christmas messages. I'll stop from the book of Joshua for a while, but then we'll pick two, three, four uh, sharing from this wonderful season. Um, I know Pentecostal churches, sometimes we are accused we don't follow the seasons. See, tunafuata neno. Luckily, as even as we follow the word, we can follow uh, the seasons. I'm looking at Matthew chapter number 1, verse 1 to 17. That is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Uh, With it, I'll be looking also at the book of uh, Luke, briefly Genesis chapter number 5, and then uh, pick a few other scriptures here and there as we go. I've entitled what I'm sharing, The Grace of of Christmas. The grace of Christmas. The grace of Christmas. The grace of Christmas is a time of giving gifts and receiving gifts. Learn to give a gift to someone. Learn to bless someone. Bless your neighbor. Learn to say something kind and good to someone. This uh, holiday is a time of giving and receiving gifts from people. A story is told of this little boy that uh, received a Christmas gift from her grandmother and she was responding by saying thank you so much for the wonderful Christmas present. It was almost as good as the one I really wanted. And many of us behave like that child. Oh, this month is as good as the one I wanted. Meaning you are saying there is one that you wanted which you haven't received. But every time you receive a gift, receive it with both hands and appreciate the giver of the gift. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because for us, we have been given a gift that is the best. And the gift that we have received is a gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's read Matthew 1, verse 1 to 17. And this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Oh, I like that. It is giving you a summary of the genealogy. We are talking about Jesus Christ. He's the son of David, and David is the son of Abraham, if you like. So it starts, Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother, oh, I tell you, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Oh, what, 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 what a scripture. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asher, Asher, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, 
Uziah the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Ammon, Ammon the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconia, and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. And we can stop at that um, and reach verse number 17. Thus there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, and 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from exile to the Messiah. If you want your story to look very interesting to your audience, one of the first things that you want to do is to come out clearly with a catchy beginning. But when you look at this, it doesn't begin that way. It begins rather in a way to tell us that there was a man called Abraham who begat Isaac. And we are told Isaac also begat Jacob and Jacob begat Judas. Then you really get into the hard names. There are wonderful names there that we read uh, that some, some of us don't pronounce them well like the Jew would pronounce them for us if we were Jew. But if you are trying to catch the attention of the whole scripture is that the writer wants to get the attention of the Jews. He wants them to hear something. He's not so concerned about you and I, but he wants the Jews to hear something. And he is speaking to Jews so that they can understand where they are coming from. So what we have in Matthew 1 is the family tree of Jesus. And a lot of people are interested in family trees. When the advent of a computer and all the computer came to, to, to uh, technology, people try as much as they can log in to find out where are they coming from. You know, the other day when Obama was a president, all of us were relatives of Obama. And, and maybe you are laughing, but it's almost true. It almost became true. Because even Banana Hill, Mushatha here, we have a lady that got married from Bondo there many years ago. Are we not relatives? No, the, the thing is, every one of us would like to be a relative of somebody big, isn't it? So we want to find... <laughs> I was telling Alice, because I shared a little bit of what I want to share, I said, you know, sometimes you want to be... Um, your genealogy, kuna chief. <laughs> That's how I said it. And you, some of you know my wife's and the Gedai here, they have achieved blood. I want him achieve. Yeah. But <laughs> she, she said this, and I, maybe Gedai can say the same. There is nothing. Okay, Jiri was there, very strong chief. But as far as Gedai is concerned and Alice is concerned, Nisis to Nawambiaga. But as from outside, we wish, my father is a chief. Because some of us, our parents were not even the chairman of the cow dip. Well, they were nothing. They were just villagers. So when you're looking at our genealogy, genealogy, you want the story to... <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was in high school, Machakos, there was a notorious man in this country, very powerful. He was in charge of the Rift Valley. His name was Mungai. Who is my father? Man! And where do I come from? Naivasha. Where was Mongai? Nakuru. So I would like to repeat, many times I would repeat, Kimani wa Mongai. <laughs> but you know we are not relatives. And then there was a DC in, in Taveta, in Taita Taveta, who was called Wairioko. My father, my father, other name is Wairioko. There was one time I tried to see whether this Wairioko, by any chance. But when we were sharing with Alice, we discovered that if you want to be a, a relative of Jomo Kenyatta, you can, if you are a Kikuyu. That was the conclusion. And some of the Kikuyus are saying, how? Because we were all from Mukoro and Yagathanga, if you believe in that story. <laughs> but it is important for the Jews to be reminded where they are coming from 
because it is key for them. But I want you to notice, first of all, the meaning of Jesus' family tree. You wonder, why does this chapter begin with all the names of all the family members of the Lord Jesus Christ? The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. There are three things that I want to, you to see in Matthew chapter number one. That number one, Jesus is not the son of Abraham. He's not, he's not the son of Adam. I beg your pardon. Jesus is not the son of Adam. You mention here the son of David and the son of Abraham, but Jesus is not mentioned as the son of Adam. The Bible has two families. The family of Adam and the family of Jesus. Jesus is not coming from Adam because Adam was created by Jesus. And Adam had no faith, but Abraham had faith. So two families... One, Adam's family. The other one, Jesus' family. And Jesus' family did not start in the New Testament. That is something that you need to know. That Jesus' family started way back because it had to do with faith, not works or deeds of men. So if those are two, the, the two families. If you look at Genesis chapter number 5, you will discover something very opposite of what I read for you. Let's see it. Genesis chapter number 5. Now this is the genealogy of a man called Adam. The account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. Verse number 2. He created the male and female and blessed them. And he named them mankind when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own likeness. His own image. And he named him. He named, he named him. And after Seth. It's okay. Continue to. After Seth was born, Adam lived 800 years. Then what happened? He had other sons and daughters. Then what happened? All together, Adam lived a total of 930 years. Then what happened? Then he died. Every one of the people that in the lineage of Adam, read chapter number 5, they all died. But when we come to the geology of Jesus, none of them has to do with the death. Because Jesus is life. Anybody who has joined his lineage will not die, will live. And even if they die, they have a promise of living again. So that is something that you need to understand. That because of Jesus... We can live. The Christ family will live. Because Jesus came and conquered death, he began to brand a new race of people. A race of people who would never die. So the question is, are you in the family of Adam? Or are you in the family of Christ? So the choice is yours. First Corinthians 15 and verse 22 says, As in Adam... All die, but in Christ, all are made alive. The way I got into Mongai's family, I had no choice. Did you have a choice? No, there are some of you that think you had a choice. Hamna, ulizaliwa, uko ulizaliwa, na uko ndiyo kwenu. Hata kama ungiapenda kuzalika uko kwingine, kule ulizaliwa ndiyo kwenu. Actually, if I were you, I would start now blessing where I'm born. Whatever they have, I would start blessing them. Because that is by God's choice. And there is a blessing for me if I become faithful there. Ata wacha kuambia mtu. Sisi tu tuwe kama ile familia. Wacha na na hiyo familia. You don't know what they go through. Wee kuwa familia yen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So um, are you? I am. I am. I got there. Not by choice. But when I come to Christ, it's by choice. I make up my mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. I want to be in his line. And you will discover a lot of the people in the genealogy of Jesus, they had a choice. Abram, follow me. 
And Abraham, what does he do? He makes a choice. Becoming a family of God, you have to make a choice. Rahab, yes, I have heard of your victory. She makes a choice. Ruth makes a choice. Are you going to make a choice today to belong into the family of Christ? We do it by choosing. And you know, for me to be born in Mungai's family, the natural had to happen. But for me to be born in the kingdom of Christ, the spiritual did happen. I had to be born again. And the question is then, is your name written in that book of life where Christ went to prepare for us? But we are talking about grace. Why do we talk about Christmas, the grace of Christmas? Why do we talk about the grace of Christmas? The grace of Christmas. The grace of Christmas. The second thing that I want to see you to see, the first one I told you is that Jesus is not the son of Adam. The second one that I want you to see is the miracles of Jesus' family tree. I, I love this. You'll find names in Matthew chapter 1, verse 2 to 17. Names of people. And if you can study the names, you'll discover some of those people, even the ones you cannot pronounce them, there were people that were put there by God's choice. God's choice. And it is important. They are important. I think they are important, and that's why they are mentioned there with us. And I have chosen three names there so that we, they can show us that Christmas... There is grace in Christmas. There is grace in Christmas. I have chosen three. There are many names and you can study them. Because there are many names. And you know, if you read them, you'll discover some of them were poets. Some of them were kings. Some of, some of them were servants. Some of them were slaves. Some of them were pagan. Not all of them were Jewish. But all of these names, there is one thing in common. There were sinners that God was calling to himself. The Bible is teaching us that God used the human flesh to conquer the devil. God teaches us that Jesus Christ is the very person that who came so that he can give us victory. And by that then, we can see from the characters that I've picked, it was grace, sheer grace, that turned them to the Lord. In the names that I've chosen, you'll discover that they are grieved. They find themselves in some very grievy position. But there is also good to know that in those names also, we find grief mixed with the joy of finding their purpose. The first name that we find is Tama. Or if I was trying to be a Jew properly, I would call it Tama. But it doesn't matter. Tama. Can we have verse number three again of Matthew? Judah is the father of Perez and Zerah. The mother was Tamar. All of you know who Judah was. If you read, you discover how the character of Judah. Because Tamar was married to one of the sons. But the son died. The next son, because it was tradition for them, married Tama. He also died. And you know, as a good father, and you have only one other son remaining, what would you do? Would you give your other son to Tama and then die? So Judah is tricky. He is trying to Avoid this. And so on and so forth. And I don't want to go to details. If you read it, you'll find a lot of details in there. Very interesting details put in there. But you can read it for yourself. So Judah 
And Tamar goes back to her parents and lives there. But the Bible tries to tell us she was not a prostitute. She wasn't. She was living godly life. But one day when she was told the father was coming in the village. So who was wrong? The father, every time he went to the village, the villagers knew why he was coming. So this lady pretended and appeared to be, because to be a harlot you have to dress in a certain way. She dressed that way. And when I was reading that, I thought, Kweri Kabisa. Siwezi yata nusa nusa marashi ambayo my daughter in law amejipakaka. Shetani sinimbaya. Hata kama kuna giza gani na umejifunga na mnagani. Hata hapa. By the way, tunajua watu na nini sasa. Wewe unajua watu na nini? Si hapa tu. Sasa kata kama alijifunga sana akawacha macho. Kweli kabisa. But you see there was a purpose for that. So that something can be revealed of the purposes and the plans of God. So she pretended and Judah went in and she had a, a child and that's why the children are mentioned. That's why she's mentioned in there that she just comes in not because of man's plan but because God had a plan. And it doesn't matter where they have thrown you. Maybe your children have no inheritance from where my sister, you got married but they kicked you out. Let me tell you God has a plan for your children. There is no child in this world that has no, God has no plan for them. You see, when, when you grow up, you are not from a single mother. Because sometimes that idea, that connotation can make you feel like you, are, you have lost it. It's like, like some of us. We are orphans. But we don't tell people we are orphans, Millicent. But we don't have parents. Why? Because there are people looking at us. How can I be an orphan who is helping other children? And that's why life, when you are looking for sympathy, you go that direction. But when you know who you are, you don't go that direction. You go the direction that I am blessed of God and God will give me my inheritance. And nobody can take it out. This lady disguised herself and her name is in here. Why is it in here? Because of grace. What are we saying? Christmas, there is grace for Christmas. There is grace for Christmas. They might have thrown you out. You know, this, when I was thinking about this, I know a lot of us here, some of you have shared with me, how when your spouse died, especially the sisters, your brothers-in-law wanted to carry everything that very day. You know, I, my, my, one of my fathers died, and we go to Banana to arrange the funeral. And then I'm listening to some of the questions that are being asked by some of these guys. And I brought it Shigana. Shiko. You know, and I'm telling them, we want to bury my father first. And again, what we need to do is to buy them, not to ask them and take it from them. Now I could depend because I insisted every day. Let's not talk about my father's property because he has a wife and children. And they were to keep on living. So I know it can happen to my family. It can happen to your family. But I'm saying, whoever has been pushed out, trust God. Just have faith in God. Because God will remember you. And your children are not forsaken. And don't look for sympathy. Hiya. So in those names, like Tama, we find the grace of God. Because Tama represents that gospel of something unique. That God can do something in the confusion of all this. In the cry from Tama's heart. I want a child. This man messed me up. I will find him. And got hold of him. And the guy was gotten very well. Because this lady was not asking for money. She wasn't a haro. She said, by the way, if something happens, what will I say? In other words... So this, this guy says, 
nitakuja nikienda naweza leta mbusi go and read it for yourself grace is found grace is found would love our names to be in those great families but tama is mentioned here but not only tama is mentioned even rahab is also mentioned in joshua you will find the story of the spies going to spy out jericho before israel would attack the city joshua said i want to know how strong they are i want to know about the fortification of the city but when they came it is the woman who told them our hearts have melted and god saved rahab rahab was not a jew but rahab's name is mentioned if you go in the book of hebrews chapter 11 and verse 31 you'll find the story of this woman that was not from the promised people but she finds herself saved because she saved also the spy by faith the harlot rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with the peace. You see, let's go back. Just put that verse back again. Now, if you look at that verse, you know why Rahab was saved. Because Rahab did not perish. Why? Because she was not like the other. She believed. No wonder if you believe in God, he will find a way to perform a miracle for you. What you need is to believe in God. She believed. She had faith in God. The others didn't. They all perished. Do you have faith in God? So here Rahab, and they mentioned prostitute. Tamar was not. But Rahab was. If you like, Tamar was misused and chased by the father-in-law. But God had a way of bringing her back into the lineage of those that were going to carry and become great, great, great grandparents of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So while the whole city was destroyed, grace was found. So Christmas is a time of grace. And I pray that God can help me find grace this Christmas 2021, even when everything else is otherwise, that I find grace. Because if I find grace and mercy, those are the things that will help me in times of need. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The other person mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus is Ruth. Ruth was not also a Jew. She was a Moabite. But Ruth, and I, I know I told you, Ruth had three statements that she made that are very, very powerful. She committed herself where you die, I'll die there. Where you'll be buried, I'll be buried. She also made some declaration. She said, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. What, what a confession. She believed in God. And God had to do wonderful things. The story tells us even the rich Boaz could not resist. Resist and got married to Ruth. So she is in the family tree to show us that the gospel is for everyone. First the Jews and also the Greek. But no matter who you are, God loves you. We can join in in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, if you go back again, the family names you, you have the word begat. That means natural conception. That means natural birth. But when you get to Matthew chapter 1 verse 16, it says, And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. There is no begotten. In other words, Joseph is not the biological father. So there is no begotting there. But Mary is the mother of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Yes, he doesn't say that Joseph begot Jesus. He said that about everyone else. But when it comes to the father of Jesus, he mentions Joseph as the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born. The Christ, the word begot, is left out. Why? Because the birth of Christ was supernatural. He was virgin born. He was conceived in Mary's womb by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's showing us that Jesus was 100% human. He had a family lineage, but he was 100% divine. He was not begotten by Joseph and Mary. He had no earthly father, but he had a heavenly father. So those are the two things that I thought are important for you to know. That in the lineage of Jesus, there are people. Actually, in the lineage of Jesus, I find your name also. I find mine there. Kimaniwa Mugai from Karatega Akurino. Yeah! I find that Mugai begot Kimani. And, you know, I pray that all my children will also come to love him that I love. You are also in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thirdly, or last of all, I want you to see the ministry of Jesus' family tree. There is a prophetic ministry here in the genealogy of Jesus. There are three sets here. Or sets of generations here. Abraham to David. David to the carrying uh, away into Babylon. And B Babylonian captivity unto Christ. But there is another generation. And that is you and I. Matthew 24 verse 32 to 35. Matthew 24 32 to 35. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So from the genealogy of Jesus, we find that there is prof a prophecy that comes forth. There is a prophecy that comes forth. When you see there is some bonding of a kind, when you see the burning of the fig tree, know that my coming is near, it is even at the door. The fig tree is a symbol of Israel. And I normally say this with a lot of caution because I don't want to become a mathematician who is a failure. Because there are, there are people who have given mathematics. We all agree that Israel coming back to Israel, it's Israel bonding. It's a fig tree bonding. But now the problem is the mathematics. There are some who say 51 years, others who say 8, 40 years, others... They have so many, they forget that Jesus says no one knows the time. It's only my father in heaven. And one day is like a thousand days. So it's like a thousand years can be one day. Now that is the mathematics of God. But there is a prophecy that because of the things that have happened when Israel became a nation in 1948, anything can happen anytime. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Because Christmas is a time of grace to reveal to you that Jesus is coming back. He might not come today, but he will come. Some of us, have, he has come and they have gone. But we that are alive, they, we are still waiting for the trumpet of God because it shall sound. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, it doesn't matter. You know when people divide and make maths and so on, they get lost in the mathematics. But the generation that sees Israel is going to see these things happen. So if a generation is a, th a thousand years, I can wait for a thousand years. But if it is even one day, I want to wait for that one day. I want to be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So is your name in the book of life? Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? How close is the coming of Christ? Jesus can come in rapture at any time. I'm not saying that Jesus will come at the end of 2021, but I'm saying he can come any time, any time of the day. You know, I like the fact that he, the Bible says, at the time that Jesus will come, some will be giving into marriage and others will be receiving. Others will be plowing and planting. Others will be in church like we are, will be singing and worshiping the Lord. But when the trump of God comes, some will be picked and others will remain. My prayer is, kweli nitakuwa, parapanda itakapolia, nitakuwa. So am I ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? For me to be born again, for me to allow the Lord to come into my heart and change me, and make me the kind of a person that can wait for the Lord Jesus Christ, that it makes my Christmas come with grace. My Christmas come with grace. So what, what, what am I saying about grace of Christmas? I'm saying, even if there is a tama in the house, there is grace for you. If there is a Rahab in the house, there is grace for you. If there is a Ruth in the house, there is grace for you. It doesn't matter how people think about you. There is grace for you. There is grace for you. There is grace for you. Don't allow people to look down on you. There is grace for you. There is grace for me. A story is told of a person when there was civil war and people are fighting and a lot of people were dying and people were dying from left and right and center. A doctor was riding across the battlefield to see if there was anyone else he could help. He wanted to see whether there is any life somewhere he could come and help. He saw the body of someone twitch a little or move a little. He saw it move. So he got down from his horse. He dismounted and went over to that soldier. He felt his pass. It was so weak. The man had a kind of a smile on his face and he was moving his lips. So the surgeon, the doctor, went very close and put his ear to his mouth to hear what this man is saying. Of course, the doctor knew he cannot help him. The pass was so weak. But this man was saying to the doctor, I am listening. I'm listening to the roll call. He was a Christian, so he was waiting for the roll call. He had enlisted. He was waiting for the roll call. Are you waiting for a roll call? Because one day the roll call will be called. And names will be called. Is your name written in the book of life? Because one day a roll call will be called. And we are all grace people. We are here by the grace of God. God has called us into his kingdom by the grace of God. Our names are in the genealogy of Jesus by the grace of God. And your children are blessed. Your children are blessed. I think if I came to say anything, it's just to come and tell you, Tama in the house, your child is blessed. Rehab in the house, your child is blessed. Ruth in the house, your child is blessed. Because Christmas is a time and season of grace. May grace locate you where you are. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I lift up my hands to bless your people. Because God, I know this Christmas, it's a time of your grace. You don't condemn anyone. Dear Father, you bless. You came to bless. You came to set free. You came to redeem. And dear Father, there are people here that you are going to redeem. 
There are people you're going to set free. There are people that you're going to bless and minister to them into their grace and into their spirit. Dear Father, that they will live here not looking for sympathy vote or sympathy help from anyone, but declaring that they are beloved of the Lord because God, you love us with everlasting love. That's why you sent Jesus to come and die on the cross for us. Therefore, Father, this holiday, I want to bless your people in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I don't know where you are listening us from, whether you're in the comfort of your house, or in the hospital, or while driving you're listening to us, or away from a foreign country. And you have heard there will be a roll call. There will be a roll call. Is your name written in the book of life? If it is not, would you like your name to be written in the book of life? Do you want your name to be written in the book of life? If you do, I would like you to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I have heard that I need to write my name in the book of life. Heavenly Father, I can't. It's only you who can. I pray that you write my name in the book of life. And that from today, I'll be a child of God. I'll be in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. I am saved from today. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, allow me to pray for you some more. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, it is those that had your call and they believed they have become the children of God. It is those that have heard your word and have believed in their spirit that, dear Father, you can translate them to be sons of God and daughters of God. I pray, dear Father, that this miracle that takes place today, anyone who has received you today, will keep on talking about you until the rapture comes to take them home. And this is our prayer for them in Jesus' name. So if you have prayed that prayer and you believe, there is a, a number that is on the screen. You can call that number and somebody will be ready to pray and help you in the name of the Lord. I say again, Merry Christmas.